G'day guys, we've got a probability question here for you today where we have two events, A and B, have the following properties. The probability of A union B, or A or B, is 0.8. The probability of A and B is 0.3. And the probability of A is 0.6. Calculate the probability of B. Okay, so there are two ways we can go about this. First of all, we could just quickly draw a Venn diagram, or we could... The second way is we can use um, the sort of the addition rule with probability where we have the probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. So if we have that, what we can do is we can just enter the probabilities that we're given. So this is part A, number one. So probability of A union B is 0 0.8. The probability of A is 0 0.6. We don't know the probability of B, so let's just write down probability of event B occurring minus the probability of A and B is 0 0.3. Great. So 0 0.6 takes 0 0.3 is 0 0.3. We'll take that over to the other side and we'll have 0 0.8 takes 0 0.3 is 0 0.5 is equal to the probability of B. Great. So that's our answer for part A number one. Now alternatively if you don't want to just write it down in the formula and you're more of a visual kind of person you can just put a Venn diagram like this. Now we know that the uh, probability of the universal set is equal to 1. We know that the probability of A union B is 0 0.8 so it means the outside piece will be 0 0.2 and we've got the probability of A and B is 0 0.3. We've got the probability of A is 0 0.6 of so this A here. We've got B there. We know that this piece here is going to have to be whatever makes up to 0 0.6, so this will be 0 0.3. And this here will be whatever makes up to 0 0.8, so this here will be 0 0.2. And as you can see, the probability of B is going to be 0 0.3 plus 0 0.2, which is 0 0.5. Okay, so let's go on to part two of this part A question. So we have number two, dot, dot. Great. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we have to work out the probability of it not being A and it being B. So there are two ways we can do this. We can refer to our Venn diagram or we can use a formula. Now the probability of it being not A and B is going to be equal to the probability of just being in B and not being in A. So it's just equal to that piece, 0 0.2. And hopefully you guys are aware of that because it has to be in both at the same time. So the only part of this Venn diagram which is in B and it's not in A simultaneously is this piece because this piece is in A and this piece is not in A. So this is our 0 0.2 section. Okay. On to part B. Part B, number one. Okay. For a third event C, the probability of C given B is 0 0.4. Okay, now what we're going to do, before we even jump into this question, I'm going to work out this, or we'll work it out. I'm going to show how this given formula works. Now, if we have a probability... And let's just, uh, like this case, we have C, given it's in B, this is equal to the probability 
that it's in C and it's in B divided by the probability that it's in B. So this formula here will work for any given sort of probability scenario. So for this one, we have the probability that it's C given that it's in B is equal to 0 0.4. So this part here is 0 0.4. Calculate B and C. So we have to calculate the numerator on this fraction. So we, this is going to be equal to the probability that it's in B and C over the probability that it's in B, which we worked out from the first question was equal to 0 0.5. Now you can do a very, very basic piece of algebra here. And you can just move the 0 0.5 to the other side, and you'll have the probability of B and C equals 0 0.4 times 0 0.5 is 0 0.2. Great. Okay, changing colors again, we have B, I, I. Now, what is it asking us? If events B and C above are independent and A and C are mutually exclusive, determine the value of the probability of A union C. Okay, well let's just start with this mutually exclusive part. So if two events are mutually exclusive, so what this means is the probability of it being in A and it being in C is equal to zero. So if we have a Venn diagram in this scenario, in mutually exclusive events, we'll have a Venn a circle here, and we'll have a circle here, and there will be no overlap. And that's what mutually exclusive means. So, we don't have any overlap. We have to find the values, the probabilities of A and A or C, so we're going to just add them. So the probability of A or C, if they're mutually exclusive, is just going to be the probability of A plus the probability of C. There's no double counting, so we don't have to minus away the intersect section. So all we have to do now is work out what the probability is that it's C, because we already know A from the start. So the probability that it is C is going to be worked out from the fact that B and C are independent. So what we can do is because they're independent events, let's just get a different color for a sec. Because C and B are independent, we can go the probability of C given B is equal to the probability of C. So, because we know that, what we can do is we can go, well, we already know what the probability of C given B is. It's equal to 0 0.2. So, the probability of C is equal to the probability of C given B, which is equal to 0 0.2. Now, what we'd have to do is now we go the probability of A union C is equal to probability of A, which is 0 0.6, plus the probability of C, which is 0 0.2, and we get an answer of 0 0.8. Okay, so where are all of our answers? We have one here, we have one here, we have one here, and we have one there. So I think the biggest thing that I've found in um, you know, studying probability, especially these um, sort of set notation style probability questions, the most important thing is getting your definitions under control. And what I mean by that is knowing when they say that they're independent and mutually exclusive and all these things like that, you know what the implications of that are. 
so you know when they say independent, we can just derive this formula. We know when they're mutually exclusive, we can derive this formula. That is what the most important thing is because if we don't know these formulas, there's no way we could get those final answers. And with this seven mark question, the big parts of the grades are going to come down here because you know this is the more complicated one, the more involved one. These ones here are quite straightforward. I would suggest that all the marks are going to come in this last question, at least three, if not four, in this last part of the question. But yeah, if you get your definitions under control, we just practice these over and over again, over again. Don't be afraid to draw the Venn diagram if you need to. It's not like it doesn't take too long just to draw a rough one. But yeah, keep practicing these guys. If you have any problems, you know, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If the video helped, sling me a like. It gives me a hand and, um, you know, hopefully I'll see you next time.